Hello, I'm Kelly Cressman. Welcome to CDP Virtual Training Center in Second Life. I'd like to show you around our island and tell you a little bit about what the Virtual Training Center has to offer. But before we do that, there are a few things you should know about the Second Life viewer that will help you get the most out of your training experience. These basic functions will help you move around, listen to the presentations, interact with the presenter and other attendees, and get tech help if you need it. First, let's talk about what you see on the screen when you log into the Second Life Viewer. Similar to other programs, there's a drop-down menu across the very top left of the viewer screen, but you won't need that right away. Most of the controls you will use frequently can be accessed in several ways, so we'll show you some shortcuts. On the far upper right of the screen are your media controls. This little speaker button is a master switch controlling all the sound in Second Life if you hover over the speaker, you'll get a sub-menu that allows you to fine-tune only certain sounds. On the left side of your screen and along the bottom are your toolbar buttons. These are some of those shortcuts we were telling you about. You can pick a completely new avatar, change your appearance, Access your inventory, which is the stuff you collect, like clothes, HUDs, note cards, and objects you use to interact with in Second Life. You can search for places, people, events, and other things in Second Life. You can save and access your landmarks, which are kind of like bookmarks, allowing you to go back to places where you've been. The mini-map tells you where you are in relation to everyone else nearby. The little yellow dot represents me. The triangle represents the direction that I'm looking in. And if there were any other people in the sim, they would be represented by little dots of their own. There's a camera here where you can take pictures of yourself and all the interesting things you see in Second Life. And finally, there's a Facebook link where you can post your activities to Facebook if you do that sort of thing. Along the bottom is the chat window. This is for chatting with people around you or having a private conversation with one of your friends or someone else nearby. The speak button is next to that. You'll notice on my viewer screen the speak button is green because I've pressed it. That's because I'm using voice controls in Second Life. That's why you're able to hear me. When you're using voice control, you'll see a white dot above your head. And when you speak, you'll see green speech waves coming out of that dot. And that lets you know that other people can hear what you're saying. It's also a good reminder if you accidentally turn your speak button on and people are hearing what you're saying as you sit at your computer. The destination button is like a little travel agent, suggesting places to visit by category. The people button tells you who's nearby, the friends you've made, whether they're online, and what groups you might belong to. The profile button tells all about you. You can edit your profile here and add pictures and information of yourself or your avatar if you like. The next button is the walk, run, fly button, which does just what it says. It toggles your avatar between these three modes so that when you use the arrow keys, you will either walk, run, or fly in the direction you choose. But let me give you a little hint. Although the arrow buttons on this pane will move you, I find it easier to make my avatar walk naturally by using the arrow keys on the keyboard. If you're using a laptop or a small keyboard that doesn't have arrow keys, you may be using the WASD buttons. Either way, Practice moving using the keyboard rather than the walking pane, and you'll move like a pro. This next button is a useful one. It's the camera control button. I like to keep this open on my viewer screen because I use it a lot. When you click this button, you'll see all your camera controls. Your first option is to choose front, side, or rear view. Most users in Second Life choose a rear view because this is the most natural, allowing you to see what your avatar would be seeing if you were standing where she is in the Second Life world. You'll see yourself from the back, but you'll see everything from that point of view. But you might at times like to use a different view for a specific purpose. For example, checking your appearance, taking a photo, or playing a game. The middle button allows you to rotate your camera view, zoom in or out, scan side to side, top to bottom, so that you can look at things from the best point of view. Your avatar won't move when you use these buttons, only your camera view. So it's useful if you're sitting in the audience and you want to look more closely at something across the room, you'll stay in place and your camera will zoom or pan as you direct it. For focusing more closely on something, you can use the last set of camera buttons, the object or mouse that we use. 
The object view allows you to click on something, then use the arrow keys or your mouse wheel to focus in very closely without having to pan or zoom around. It's handy if you're building something, working on your appearance, reading a sign, or examining a detail in the world. The mouse look view is a little different. It's mostly used in gaming or weapon systems, allowing you to focus and shoot on a target or pan around in a very small area. You won't see yourself in this view, only what you would see if you were standing in the spot where your avatar is standing. You won't use this view much at the training center, but you might if you visit an archery range or a combat sim. Sometimes if you use your mouse wheel to scroll in close, you'll default to mouse look. If this happens, just click escape and return to a normal view. In fact, if you find any of your camera or movement controls aren't working as you think they should, Escape will reset any special views or camera controls you've changed so that you'll proceed normally. This last button is the How-To button, really a help feature that'll bring up some help screens covering basic functions in Second Life. It'll be pretty handy in the beginning as you're getting oriented to Second Life. So that's it. Those are the basic screen functions available to you in the viewer. To learn more, select one of our specific how-to videos or go to the webpage listed on our screen to view the Second Life knowledge base. Most of all, have fun in Second Life.